Okay, um, hi and welcome to the 2018 paper two of the Liebeser Ordinary Level. This is question seven, okay, and it's a long question, it's got 60 marks. I suggest I need to do different sections, and there's lots of them, and pause the video and have a go at yourself. If you want the set of notes I'm working off with the answers and workings built in on the next page, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address is in the description below. So part A here says, actually, let's read the question from up here. Question seven, the table below shows the total rainfall in millimeters. Okay, so you see the units there in millimeters and the total sunshine in hours. Okay, so the hours there at Valencia County Kerry during the month of June from 2001 to 2010. So it's the same month of a year and they're tracking the rainfall through those years and the sunshine through those years. So part A, part one here says, find the range of the rainfall data. Now be very careful you're looking at the right set of data. That's the rainfall, that's my focus here. The range is found by subtracting the smallest rainfall from the largest rainfall. So in the given years there, now 155 looks to me to be the largest and 47 looks to me to be the smallest. Very easy to go wrong here, just be, just be extra careful. Okay, so show that sum, 155 take away 47, and that should give me 108. So the answer uh, done out here in the next page. Let's go back, just try the next part. So A, part two, the year with the highest June rainfall. Okay, so again, we're looking at rainfall, which is the highest. Again, it seems to be the 155 here, so that answer for part two, looks to be 2003. Then the third part, the year with the least June sunshine. And we're looking now at the sunshine to the bottom row. What's the least number here? 124, it is 124. So we have 2002 being the year with the least sunshine. Now part B here says, based on the data in the, the table, write down the year with the best June weather and give a reason for your answer. Now, this is tricky because, like, what's a good year for somebody in the agriculture? It could be uh, lots of sun, lots of rain. For somebody who wants to get a tan, it could be no rain, lots of sun. Okay. You know, any number of different perspectives here. So any justification based upon your answer is acceptable. But you have to pick an answer. Now, I would argue, from my perspective, that 2006, lots of sun, very little rain. Okay, I can, you know, to me, to me, that's important. Again, if you have, let's say, for example, you had a farmer who said, oh, 2005 was a better year because I had a fair amount of sun, but a fair amount of rain as well. So the plants grew well. Okay, complete different answer, but also equally correct. So you, whatever year you have, you should back it up with a reasonable answer. And you would have done well here. Now, this is the, the, the results put in again. I put in 2006 as my thing, and the reason I had was more sunshine and least rainfall. Now, part C here says, write the rainfall data in increasing order, and hence find the median of the rainfall. So I'm going to show the data here. Now, that's the data of the rainfall in increasing size. I then look at what's the middle number. Okay, so middle number should be somewhere around here. So there's four numbers below 94. There's four numbers above 101. There's no middle number there. If there was, we'd just take down that, that number. We're trying to find the halfway point between 94 and 101. So that's basically, if you look at it, it's the mean of those two numbers. So if we add them together and divide by two, we, I got 97.5 millimeters. Job done. Now, part D part one here says, find the mean number of sunshine hours for June in Valencia between 2001 and 2010. Now, I made a mistake earlier and I just used the rainfall data because I had been using it here. I just used this in the mean and only caught it like after. Even though I marked the 500 or something scripts um, with multiple people making that same mistake. So it's easy to do. Okay, so I'm, I'm sympathetic. Just be careful reading the question right and read it very carefully, even though your concentration by question seven is pro probably pretty whacked. Okay. Anyway, the sunshine hours is the bottom row data. So I add them together and divide by the number of them. Okay, so it's the mean here. Add, add all your data, divide by the number of data points. So I end up putting out together, I got uh, 1,810 divided by 10. That just drops to zero. And I end up at 181.8. Okay. That should actually be one, that should be a 1818. 
I'm not mistaken. Anyway, so that's um, part D, part one. Okay, so for part D, part two, it says, for what years was the sunshine data within 5% of the mean number of sunshine hours in Valencia? You know the mean, you just found it. Okay, what data was in 5% of that? Plus 5% or minus 5%. So the answer done here, okay, 5% of 181.8 is 9.09. .09. So I'm going to add that to my mean and subtract that from my mean. So plus 5% is 190.89 and minus 5% is 172.73. So what years were between that? Now, if we went back, we could look at it, but you can do that yourself, okay, and just if you, you'll be able to identify what years were between those two values, okay, which is 2003, 2004, 2005. No matter whatever answer you got um, in part D part one would affect the answer here. Okay, so if you weren't able to do D part one, you just completely forgot how to find the mean, just make up a value. Okay, plus or minus 5% of that, and you still get full marks for this. Okay, now part E here says find the standard deviation of the rainfall data in millimeters, correct to one decimal place. Now, I, there's a link here, I hope it's good. I've for the Casio, how to find standard deviation. The one the sharp is a YouTube video. Um, if you have the set notes here, you can follow those links. If you're able to use your calculator uh, to find it, which you're expecting here, you have very little space. You can't calculate it by hand, and it would take forever, okay? And you wouldn't have the time for it. So beware. They can easily ask a standard deviation question, and if you can't use the calculator, you're going to be just stuck and not able to answer it, okay? So I, I use the calculator. The answer comes out. It's 33.46, blah, blah, blah. They want it to one decimal place, so the four is what matters. The number prior to it is the six, so the five goes up by one. You end up at 23.5 millimeters. That's part E. Now part F here, okay, um, you're asked to look at the scatter plot of the data in the table below. The first four points are plotted. You're asked to plot the rest of them, okay? So you'll see there now the total sunshine versus the total rainfall. You do it for each June, okay, and you're basically looking at an X value and a Y value. So if we go on to the next answer, um, you have the other one, two, three, four, five, six data points are plotted uh, as shown there. That shouldn't be without, you know, beyond the realms of anything, okay. That was the one, the 2006 data there. Um, you're not asked to label them, but it would be the worst thing in the world to go each year you have beside the one you put on. Just make it nice and clear um and and easy to see now the next part two here says what are the numbers in the table on the right is the correlation coefficient for the data above correct one decimal place based on the scatter plot select the number that you think most accurately reflects this data explain your choice now this was given a 5a if your explanation wasn't correct or you picked up whatever if you did anything wrong zero it's harsh but that's that's what it was now the answer there you see there's negative 0.6 i know it's not positive 0.6 or positive 0.1 because that would be a correlation positive 0.1 uh would be a loose correlation okay um like you know going upwards but not very you know something like that uh a positive 0.6 would be going up will be much more close Okay. Now, these are going down, okay, so it's not negative 0.1, okay, the data is going downwards, it's negative 0.6, because if you look at the data itself here, now it looks fairly spread out, I can see how people could pick negative 0.1, um, a 1 is a perfect correlation, a negative, negative 1 would be perfect correlation, each dot, like that, okay, so this is not negative 1, but it's not all over the place either, okay, all, negative 0.1 is almost no correlation. Okay, so things be much more spread out. So it's negative because it's going down. Um, 0.6 because uh, it's fa it's fairly strong. Now, if you said there there was a weak correlation, okay, you have to say a correlation is negative. A lot of students said it's a weak correlation. And I get where they're coming from, okay, but it's not correct. Uh, it's a moderate or more correctly, it's, it's strong. So I think about 0.5 is moderate. I think around 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is strong. Uh, negative one or plus one is a perfect uh, correlation. It doesn't really happen in 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 in, in nature or the world. Okay, it's not rare. So that's part F. Okay, so let's see the part F. 
and see you on question eight.